Welcome back to Warsaw Fan TV. The Join the Pain podcast is also live. Warsaw um, struggled against Doncaster, and uh, but we're still in a good position. Saturday, Notts County come to town. So uh, Notts County talk are the crew. And uh, we've got Jake Horton with us. How are you doing, Jake? I'm very well, thank you, Simon. How are you? I'm uh, very good, very good. Before we played Doncaster last night, I thought it wouldn't matter too much if we'd lost that. Um, but now we have lost it and they're just a point behind us. It feels a bit ominous with them uh, drawing down on us. But this is all about um, Saturday. Notts County, what's going on with them? I'd, lo- I'd, I'd love to know. You know, we had... We um... thought, we thought, we thought Notts County were going to be up there and doing the business. Um, it's not through lack of goals. When uh, when we played you at your place, I spoke to Tom before the game and he said, we can't defend. And um, Yeah, I think not- it's quite evident we can't, we can't defend. 79 goals no. conceded more than any other team in this league so far. Um, are you old enough to remember? Are you old enough to remember the song Vindaloo? Yeah, yeah. You know the lyrics from that, don't you? We will score one more than you. <laughs> that it's that mentality be, we've had for the past two seasons, I can assure you. That's. I think you ought to play that before your team runs out, I think. Um, Luke Williams, him leaving you was obviously not great. Um, but, I mean, the writing was on the wall a little bit before then, um, since, Luke Main, uh, since Stuart Maynard took over. And... Um, you slipped from sixth, sixth to fifteenth. Well, we were we were lower than that a few weeks ago. Um, we were right down to about seventeenth, eighteenth at one point. It's been an incredible fall from grace for us. We had obviously the absolute euphoria of last season. Uh, obviously, I think we had the football in world watching the race battle between us and Wrexham last year in the national league, right, yeah. which was completely undocumented and unheard of. Um, <laughs> we obviously fell agonisingly short um, and then had to go through a whirlwind of a playoff campaign where we led for all of two minutes against Boreham Wood and Chesterfield and still won the playoffs, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Incredible. And so I think we sort of, and then going into this season, there's still that sort of euphoria about what happened last year and we just dominated every National League team apart from Wrexham. Um, And, you know, we just, we just, I think we took off really well. Um, and I think it was about October, sort of late October, November, we were top of the league. And there's talk again of us having this battle with Wrexham and Stockport at the top of the league and yeah. everything was going fine. And then it just just started to decline. And I think Warsaw was probably, at home, was probably one of those first games that we saw in that decline because I think we all expected to quite comfortably turn you over at that point. Yeah. And we did it. We lost 2-1. And I think it was sort of that, I wouldn't say that was the catalyst point of the season, but sort of from December going onwards, you know, we've we've always known we were frail at the back. And, you know, the 79 goals conceded and some of the yeah. comical errors that have been going on this season. And I think sort of reality's dawned on us since sort of early December to till then Luke Williams leaving us just shortly after Christmas. And then Stuart Maynard's come in and it went from, we just need a few yeah. tweaks to fix the defence to we need a whole new squad in the summer now. So it's been quite a spectacular collapse and a bit of a harsh reality check back to earth for us. So. Uh, so Maynard, he was a Wildstone manager, wasn't he? He was, yeah. He was at Wildstone, yeah. So um, it's it's quite a, quite a tough challenge for a manager to come in from that. He had a few years there. He had two or three years there. He right? did, yeah. He got them promoted from whatever the league, National League North, I think they were, or Set- no, they yeah. South, yeah. So it's um it's been tough when you look at your team and it's like I can't understand how they're not right up there. Um, Macaulay Langstaff, every everybody expected him to go on to League One or Championship, and you managed to keep hold of him. Uh, Dave McGoldrick, yeah, Dave yeah. McGoldrick as well. Like that's an incredible coup yeah. to to get him. Yeah. And it's not like they've not performed for you. Like Langstaff, twenty six goals, six assists. He's absolutely tearing the division up. McGoldrick, 13 and 6, is still a great return. 
Uh, Danny Crowley as well. We don't. I don't He's know. Much yeah, he came from he came from he came from the relegated Morecambe side last year. Um, sort of we we had uh, we had a player called Ruben Rodriguez who went to Oxford, which sort of played oh, in that sort it. of yeah, yeah. yeah n- number sort of like number ten role, uh, sort of like quite free flowing creative player. Yeah, uh, f- and we thought it'd be a, a massive loss for us, and, and he was. But then we signed Danny Crowley from Morecambe, obviously from a relegated side that didn't do very yeah. well last year, and he's been a a breath of fresh air as well. He's been, you know, he's, he's all over the place. He's busy. He's creative. Scores a lot of headers to say he's only about five foot seven, five foot eight. Um, a bit, an absolute bit of a revolution as well. Yeah. So, and then you forget Jody Jones we've got as well. 20 well, assists. He was next on my list. Six goals, 23 assists. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. I think the key, the key to our victory um, at your place was Tom Knowles stuck to him like glue. And um, Matt Sadler, our manager, has come under some criticism. But tactically, he got it spot on there. And he stopped Jody Jones creating for you. Mm. And um, and that was a big key. You're going to like what I'm going to say next. Um, Tom Knowles is injured. Oh. And uh, so he's not going to be able to mark him. And the guy we've got playing in his position... He's a young lad who uh, has had a couple of years at Kidderminster on loan. Mm. Um, he's been doing well, in fairness, but keeping hold of Jody Jones is going to be a, a challenge for him, I think. Although Jody hasn't started our last two games, he's recently had a baby. So he's, he's had a baby. Up, baby. That's a record, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. What did his wife oh, say? No, right. Not he's had a baby. He's not his wife's <laughs> had a baby, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> or his missus had a baby, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he he's been just coming off the bench for cameos over the past two games. Although, okay, yeah, I'll yeah, keep, no, him, keep him out of it then. I don't I don't know if he'll start on Saturday. I he, he might do now, given it's been two weeks, so he could start, but he might again might keep him on. We've had Adam Chickson that's been playing reasonably well in his position. So. Yeah, the your recent result you have picked up a bit recently, but you, your results are sort of. All over the place, really. Um, three nil home win at Harrogate, a time to Harrogate, excellent result. Great performance. Um, three all against uh, MK Dons. That's definitely a Vindaloo song coming out for that one. Um, Swindon lost away to Swindon, who really was struggling for a point or anything. So that was a shock. And then to lose at home to Salford. Um, Salford are a good team, but um, again, that's a bad one. But then an away, a three 0 away win at Bradford, so it's it's very much a mixed bag for you. That's been the theme since Maynard's come in, really. So we've had some fantastic. We we went to uh, Newport away on a Tuesday night. I think it was probably about six eight weeks ago, and you know they were flying to, like they'd won five in a row before we played them, and we turned them over away from home on a Tuesday night, and it was we thought that'd be a real turning point for Maynard and the team sort of going forward and then I think we just crashed and burnt the week I can't remember we played the week after but we just lost the plot really I remember we was playing Crawley and we had they had some at like 28 shots on goal against us and it, Crawley, it, it, the incons- Crawley have done incons- re- remarkable they have done I, remarkably well yeah I looked at it with um, my contact for Doncaster and um, 10th of February we were 16th Doncaster 20th and Crawley were 15th. And um, the three of us have all had a really good run and uh, up into the action, as it were. Crawley doing the best. But I think Doncaster's points, 29 points. Well, that's in the last 13 games. 32 points in the last 13 games. Yeah. That is mad. Which is incredible. To say they're probably, uh, this is, again, just, just my opinion from the two games that I've seen uh, home and away against Doncaster this season. They're probably one of the worst sides I've seen. So, it's just <laughs> funny how it works night. sometimes, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Warsaw were there last night against them. First half, Warsaw dominated and should have been well ahead. Um, and then they scored a counter attack goal just before half time, uh, went in 1 0. Second half, fair play to them, they they dominated us. Second half, and uh, they got the second goal to seal it, and then we pulled one back late on. But, they thoroughly deserve the win in the end. Um, Warsaw, um, chasing seventh place, but I mean, it's 
it's one of those when you're chasing after somebody and you're sort of reaching your hand out trying to touch them and uh, you end up falling on your face and it feels it feels like it is a big ask for Warsaw. I um, got three home games starting with Notts County and then Wimbledon away last match of the season. If we win all three, we go to Wimbledon with a real good chance of making top seven. But winning three home games on the bounce in uh, seven days, pretty much, is a tough ask. Is a tough ask yeah. Um, for Warsaw, uh, Isaac Hutchinson is the standout player. He scored his 12th goal of the season with 10 assists. Uh, and Jamil Matt um, scored last Saturday. Um, he got his sixth goal. He sort of didn't really feature at the start of the season. Um, and he's just sort of coming into his own. But he's had a bit of a knock, so he's not fully fit. Um, Freddie Draper, who did so well start of the season, um, he went back to Lincoln. And uh, the surprise package of the season is uh, an Irish lad, O'Shane McIntyre. Um, he got injured um, just after the game against you guys. And... Um, he scored he both did. goals against us, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Two excellent finishes. Yeah. Yeah. The second one particularly was an awesome finish. But And he's been a big miss. He's very, very physical, very energetic and gets everywhere. And um, that was a miss. The guy with... The guy that Cora came in after a long absence was uh, Jack Earing. And when he started playing with Hutch, Isaac Hutchinson, they really gelled and brought the best out of Hutch. But uh, he's now injured. So um, we sort of starting to run out of players, really. So, as I mentioned, Knowles is out as well. Um, our first choice centre-halves, um, Priestley Farquharson, and Donovan Daniels, both of those have been out injured. They are coming back, um, and the youngsters that have been filling in for them have been doing well and pretty much are keeping them out at the minute. But it's all, it's still a very young side, Warsaw, and um, that's why I think this the final running, it's uh, some big characters are needed, I think. Another outlet for us would be Aramidioti. Um, it was a very tricky winger, but he's he's had an injury. He, he did look like he was coming back, but he's disappeared again. So um, he's perhaps had a relapse. So we are down to the bare bounds of the squad. Mm, does sound um, like a quite a few injury crises are there, aren't you? Yeah, and I think we've, we've got a better squad than we had last season, but with the injuries we've had, um, it is sort of pressing on us a bit at the minute. So, you guys, you just need to not turn up on Saturday and just stand up the three points. Is that OK? I, I can't really promise you what you're going to get. We, <laughs> we, I really can't. I can't. I can't describe to you how we're going to... It's, it's so random at the moment that I couldn't I couldn't put my feet... Well, I've have a spectacular display and play really well. And, you know, our front lot, our front sort of core of um well McGoldrick isn't even playing again at the minute. We've got this Asalana Jatta, this um so four four out, yeah. He's not he's not out injured. He's just um we've got uh we signed this Asalana Jatta from uh oh God is the the club escapes me now, but uh Viborg from um the yeah. Dutch league, Danish league, one of the two. Okay. Um six foot four, big athletic sort of forward, um sort of really horrible player to play against if that makes sense um yeah. so he's been sort of playing in that forward spearhead role um instead of langstaff actually langstaff's been sort of moved on to the left a little bit um and it, he, sounds, he can... like, it sounds like you needed to buy, use him in defense <laughs> that that was my other point is that we could come and just have a spectacular defensive collapse as we do um i think the game against Harrogate on Saturday was our second or third clean sheet of the season. Yeah. Which is spectacular to say. We've, and, and even then, our keeper deserved to be man of the match on Saturday. Yeah. Um, and we saved the penalty. So, Blue that was, it all went well for you then? Yeah. We, we played well, but again, defensively, we could have conceded a couple. Um, it's just, it's not even like we get cut open by teams. We just make calamitous errors that are borderline comedy. Yeah. Uh, if if anybody watching this wants to go back and watch our FA Cup 
replay again, or FA Cup second round game against Shrewsbury. Yeah, I think, I think that, that, that caught that fire on game. Twitter. The three goals that we conceded, it genuinely looked like we were match fixing. Uh, that's the only way to describe it, and it was hilarious. It, it just you couldn't even be mad because of how co- comical it was. I think, but on a positive on a positive side of things, um, after promotion from the National League, it has has been it's turned into a season of consolidation for yes. you. Yes, and I yes. think you're definitely going to be competing next season in the top end. Yeah, I, I think. Again, I think that there's been some disconcern amongst Notts fans but about where we should be. I think a lot of people think we've got a given right to be in the playoffs this season. We should be in the playoffs this season or at least battling for that. Um, and again, I think a lot of that was built on, you know, we, we've had, we obviously had five, four, four years in the National League, which we made yeah. the playoffs. We lost in the playoffs three times, then finally did it. So, um we're used to that winning mentality, but I think sort of before that, when we was still a national league club, we were we were awful for all. I've been a fan for twenty five years now, and it, it, apart from the last four or five years, we've been terrible for the past twenty yeah. odd. So you know, I think a season of just being back in the football league, finishing mid table. The owners have come out and confirmed that Maynard's not going anywhere. He's going to have the summer. Yeah. We stay in, so it, it doesn't really matter again what the last couple of results are this season. Um, there's some big projects going on around Meadow Lane, you know, there's a new fan park that was announced the other day, and things like that. So it's all really positive. So I, I don't I, I don't see an issue with consolidating this season and having another go next year. And if it does start badly, then at least you can get rid of him early enough to. Maynard, do you think Maynard's the right guy to take you forward? Uh, it, uh, you put me on the spot with that one a little bit. <laughs> it's very difficult because, again, Luke Williams was uncharacteristically brilliant for us, and I think it was yeah. so hard to follow to the galvanising effect he had on both yeah. players and fans. Um, so I'd like he's a very nice guy. He comes across very nice, and he comes across very well. So you you want to see him to do well. But sometimes he just does things that you, just baffle you, and nothing seems to have really changed defensively. And I think he might, given he has the whole summer to for recruitment, etc. Then I think there will be a lot more pressure on him for the first ten games next season. Yeah, I think Warsaw's uh, manager Matt Sadler. I think it's similar game really for him. Um, it's his first year in management in in sort of uh, the top job sort of thing. And he has made some uh, weird decisions. The um, Good Friday match away to MK Dons. Um, that oh, that's where you got you lost, you got battered, didn't you? Was it about yeah, four, yeah. Five nil? yeah. The thing it was five nil in the end. Yeah. But um, he made so many mistakes in that game, his selection and everything. But saying that, Warsaw were all over MK Dons. And should have been 2 0 up by half time. Um, but then, sort of, second half, it should have went sort of from bad to worse, really. Um, Donovan Daniel, Daniels, who'd been out injured, he brought him back and uh, unsettled the back three that had been doing so well. Um, Adebay Aga, who's the guy we got on loan from Norwich, uh, playing right sided centre half, he played him at right wing back. And it just didn't work. Donovan Daniels, who is more comfortable in the centre or on the left, he played him as right centre half, and he he wasn't fit, and uh, he got ripped apart in the first two minutes. And it was, and then we got an, another player, Ryan Sturk, who'd come back after injury. It was his first game back, and um, we got Brandon Comley, who just got back from international duty. And uh, Liam Gordon, just back from international duty. And um, the players all look shattered. And I mean, yeah. not at the end of the game. It was clear the first five minutes that there was the three, the three especially, Daniel, Sturk and Gordon, they were, they were trying to run on treacle. They were so far off the pace. And um, how we got four. And then despite that, Despite that, we should have been two up. Malfar had two great chances. Um, one hit just wide. The second one, keeper made a decent save. 
and at half time it was like oh he's gonna make changes because they're obviously shattered and he took Mal Farl off because <laughs> he yeah. was tired they said he was tired and but he left the others on and uh it it does sound quite typical to me there's been some games when Maynard's been in charge and he's just either not made subs or um it took off made questionable subs if that's made sense because well, uh, this one I say he took Mal Farl off he had four strikers on the bench. Guess what he brought on? Defender, maybe. <laughs> a midfielder. He brought a midfielder on. So second, we started the second half with one striker, who Josh Gordon is not a goal scorer by any means. Um, he had a good run for Barrow last season, and um, scored fifteen goals which was the first time he'd really sort of scored more than six or seven in a season, I think. And he got a move to Burton Albion, played 18 games and didn't score, and then came on loan to Warsaw, and he's got one goal since January for us. Um, he's just not a finisher at all. Um, so we were left with him up front on his own um, against uh, one of the best teams in the division. So, um, so then as soon as the goal started going in, it was like Warsaw carried on trying to attack and um, it just was awful. But the manager sorted it out, reverted the team to what it should have been on the Monday and then uh, we won again. So that was good. So, yeah, Warsaw, I think perhaps losing a bit of steam in the, uh, the playoff push. But... A win against you guys on Saturday. We've then got Swindon at home on Tuesday, and Barrow at, uh, and Bradford at home on the Saturday. So if we could start off with a win against you guys, if you don't mind, then uh, then the the hopes of scraping into the top seven um, have got a chance. Whereabouts if, if did, did you finish last season? If you don't, I, I we're sixteenth. Really you finished sixteenth, so it's been a yeah. Would you say it's been a positive season for Warsaw it's this season? Good. At the start of the season, I said if we're around about if we finish in the top ten, um, and be in the mix for the playoff chase, then I'm happy, and we are that. that way, so yeah, I am yeah. happy with that. Um, positives for Warsaw if we do creep into the top seven, which is a big ask, really. Tom Knowles, Jack Earing, and McKenty a close to a return so it could be that they'll be back for the playoffs so, so um good. yeah so if we can get into the playoffs we uh you've got, you got some key key players coming back then haven't you key players coming back but deep down um we try to keep the faith and all that but deep down i think it's going to be tough because crawley are going really well they're still three points above us with four games to go They've got some tough games. Um, and Barrow, they are five points above us. With two games um, in hand. With, with, five oh, game games, in hand. Sorry, yeah. with five games to play. But again, Barrow have got some really tough games. But the problem is Doncaster now, just a point behind us. If we drop I any points... I can't believe that. They, 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 yeah, I can't believe how well they've come on from, from when they, we saw... We, we played them on Boxing Day and... They've won yeah. seven on the bounce and they've hardly conceded a goal. Yeah. Um, Walsall's goal against them last night was the first goal they conceded in five games. That's incredible. Yeah. You'd love that kind of defence, wouldn't you? <laughs> I'd like us just not to concede. It'd be nice. I don't know. Well, uh, predictions for the game then, uh, Jake? Nil nil. No, I've got a bit, yeah, I've got a bit of a, a theme that I do say on Notts County Talk that I always predict. Now, I've got it right once this season against Morecambe. Um, so I can see us doing all this and chatting about how good our strike force is and how bad our defence is, and then we just come out and just have a drab nil nil. Nil nil. You think of nil nil? No, I'm going to go for nil nil. I can't not. <laughs> Never don't. <laughs> I would be ecstatic with a nil nil. And a, a Warsaw goal at injury time, I would be uh, for one nil. That would do me. I'm, uh, but the goal fest is the thing. Now Warsaw obviously don't score as many goals as you guys because I don't think anybody does. 
so a Warsaw, if you score two, a Warsaw capable of scoring three. Oh, 100%. Um, but it no. depends on your defence, I suppose. If your defence is sort of just stepping aside and letting us stroll through. Yeah, you see, I... the... Sorry. Sorry. It depends on the walking wounded, I guess. Because uh, Jamil Matt, if he's not fit to start, that's uh, a big loss for us. Because um, that'd be like another striker. Um, the fans have been shouting for Danny Johnson. Um, he did very well for us at the start of last season. Scored 15 goals before January. Um, he was on loan and Mansfield recalled him to stop Warsaw doing any good in the playoffs, I guess. Um, and we sort of fell away a little bit. We bought him at the end of the season because oh. he was out of contract. But then he doesn't really fit with Matt Sadler's style, which is sort of like a very high press. Um, and even though he's an accomplished goal scorer, um, he's not really played. He's got four goals in 23 appearances, but like most of the appearances have been sort of late cameos. Um, he had 25 minutes last night, which is the most he's played um, probably since August, August, September time. Um, but so do you think he'll get more of a start against us or is it just more for the running? Um, I don't know, but he... He didn't get a sniff last night. He was on for 25 minutes, didn't get near anything. So, uh, But Doncaster were dominating, in fairness. So we might see Danny Johnson at some point. I think if we're, if we're not winning with uh, 20 minutes to go, I think Danny Johnson could be uh, making an appearance. And uh, hopefully it'll come good. We did have a fan chat on Friday, and uh, one of the guys, Darren, said... Mansfield will fail to make automatic and get in the playoffs. We'll get in the playoffs, and then Danny Johnson will score the winner in the playoff final against Mansfield. That'd be that'd be theatre, wouldn't it? Because the, the, um, the the song, the way the song, Danny Johnson is a red. He hates Mansfield <laughs> <laughs> because he'd been playing for Warsaw, scored fifteen goals. Everybody loved him, and he wanted to come to Warsaw. And uh, Mansfield wouldn't release him. They, they sort of like put like a quarter of a million pound price on his head, uh, which is obviously way out of everybody's league. Um, and then he sat on the bench pretty much for them for the rest of the season. Um, he had just had one or two cameos. And there's there's one incident where he, he scored for them. And then, I know, somebody scored. And while they all went off cheering, he tied his lace. Oh, so that's sort of be out in protest against it was it yeah that sort of yeah. thing but um then when he scored when he scored he went and tied his lace after he scored so it's a but it, dj is <clears throat> he's one of the old traditional strikers really um he's he's not an aerial powerhouse and he's not quick but he's a great finisher so you've yeah. got to get the ball to him and that's the problem that's the problem Right then, Jay, thank you very much for coming on. Absolute um, pleasure. Are you coming down for the game? Certainly am, yeah. First time actually going to Warsaw. I've, I've never been to the stadium before, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, if you get a chance to sample the beer, we've got the Nofow Brewery um, are doing their launch on Saturday. So um, I'll be in the locker, which is our special place um, on on the surrounding the ground. Um, get a beer in there. But um, I think for away fans, you have to be a member. So I don't think your away fans will get in unless you have to pay fiver to get in or something. I'm sure you don't. Well, I'm sure we'll find some way around there to have a swift part. <laughs> we go. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it, actually. No, as I said, another ground to tick off for me. So Yeah, we're it should be an entertaining game. Up. As much as your prediction of nil-nil, I think there's no chance it's going to be nil-nil. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I can't not predict it. I've been doing it all season. Oh, dear. Right then. The joy and the yep. pain. We are we are done. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate it. Enjoy the game. Cheers, Cheers bye -bye. mate. Thank you.